Hello and a very good day to you. Thank you for being with us. And today we have some very good news for you. We are very happy to announce a new tool uh, called Step by Step Animation in Zero Block. Uh, Zero Block is our web page editor. So if you have some great ideas about animating your page, uh, this tool is perfect for that. It will make all your craziest, most creative ideas a reality and it will really liven up your web page. Uh, we have prepared a small demonstration for you uh, to show you how this tool works. It's a landing page and we will show you how to animate various features of this web page. So as you can see, uh, we, I'm scrolling down the page and different elements pop up. I think it looks great. I am so happy with it. We've actually spent a very long time uh, designing this tool and I um, let me show you how, how it works. So here's the page. Well, uh, before we start, I'd like to tell you this. This is all um, available uh, for users of Zero Block. If this is your first time with us, uh, you may add Zero Block by clicking this button. Zero Block uh, is a web editor for professional designers. Let's just open Zero Block and create something simple. I'd like for the yellow square uh, to move from left to right. So what do I do? I add a shape, uh, a square. Then I open settings. Then I scroll down and as you can notice, we've added a new uh, feature called step-by-step -step animation. There are two animation modes inside Zero Block. The first one is basic animation. It's the most simple form of animation. And it means pre-prepared, such as fade-in animation, fade-in animation when the page is moving up, when it's moving down, and when it's moving left to right, and also parallax and fixing. I would say that in 90% of all cases, uh, you just need these three features. It's all you need. But when you need to create something amazing, uh, some, you have an idea that, that you're super excited about, just click Add and go to step-by-step -step animation. You can see that this uh, panel is empty. You can see um, two tabs. One is called Event and another is called None. An event is something that will trigger your animation and here you can see the following options None, element on screen, block on screen, on scroll, on hover, on click. Let's select element on screen. Uh, don't pay attention to anything here. Uh, let's just scroll down. So what we do next is we select a step. Click add step. Uh, you can see there are two steps you can switch between the two of them. So when you switch between steps, you can see that rim, the border changes color. Uh, when, when it's blue, that means you're still in regular mode. But when it's green, that means you are editing this uh, step. Each step uh, has a number of properties. Uh, for example, duration, movement, scale, opacity, rotation, easing and delay. Let's move uh, this element uh, from left to right. 
you uh, can see that uh, the property called move um, has changed. You can also uh, change uh, its position manually right here. So what you're doing here you, is you're telling um, the editor to move uh, your object, uh, the square, from zero uh, to uh, 700 pixels along the x-axis. And now you can check how your animation is working out. Here's a button called play element. Click it and voila, here's uh, the animation. You can change uh, other properties as well. Um, let's just uh, do rotation. Okay, 90 degrees, uh, click play element. Super, and this is how animation works. There is nothing difficult about it, uh, it's very intuitive. Let's uh, see the animation in situ uh, on a page. For this, I recommend that you open two tabs. Uh, one in the first tab, you will be doing your editing and in the second, uh, you can have a preview and test your animation in it. Let's uh, save this page and let's uh, actually go to the actual page to see what the animation looks like. Let's take a better look at the properties. As I've, as I've said before, uh, an event is something that launches an animation. The next property is called start trigger. Um, something, it is something that will trigger an animation. We have the uh, window bottom selected at the moment. That means when our object would appear uh, on the bottom of the screen, it will serve as a signal uh, to start the animation. You can also choose on center or when it reaches the top of the screen. The setting called trigger offset means um, that you want your animation to start a little bit later so you can put in 200 pixels that means it will uh, the animation will launch at 200 pixels you can also loop your animation and with our next function test the animation uh, either a single element or the entire animation step by step here you can either add or delete steps. Uh, to delete, uh, just uh, click on cross. Here you see add step button, uh, so click on it to add a step. One frequent question we get is uh, how to launch an animation from a position different from a default position. Um, it's very simple and you can read about it here. Add a step, go to duration and change it to zero. Then I change opacity to zero and I want my element to appear from opacity so I add the second step. I change duration to one and opacity to 100%. And I will move our element a little bit to the right. Let's play this animation. And here's what it looks like on the page. Uh, let me show you how other triggers work. And for this, I will add an element to the page and select appear on scroll. I want my element to move from left to right, but as I scroll through the page. Uh, let's move it a bit lower down and let's add text. So let's go over this once more, one more time. We have two steps. The first step is the start. Uh, second step is the is when the element moves to the right. Uh, 
uh, and we want the animation to appear on scroll. Let's test our animation. Now let's scroll uh, across the page and look at our animation. As you can see, I am scrolling and the object is moving. Here the duration of our animation is 100 pixels. And of course I can edit this property. I can set the distance at 300 pixels. I can add another step and I can move our object down the page. And then I can add a third step. Let me move this to the left, in the bottom of the page. And I'll move the distance to 100 pixels. Then I will add another step, step four, to move our object up. Um, I don't know what the end result will be, let's see. So as I scroll, our element is moving to the right, up, then down, then back, then down uh, where it stopped. And of course you can set the duration of each step uh, in these boxes here. So this is it for now. Uh, please use this new tool, uh, show us examples of how you use it. Your websites uh, really inspire us. They inspire us to keep improving um, our tools and adding new features on Tinder. So thank you very much and see you soon.